Um, Barnhold. <clears throat> Build. Library, maybe? Sacred Grove. Tower, lava. We have a shrine. We don't have a longhouse here. But a town hall. We don't have a library. Purchase. Um. Constructed PS Marina on hold in. Be right back, be right back. All right. Uh -huh. We have a shrine. We can upgrade it. There. Now we have a temple. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe I talk to them first. Your Highness, there is unrest among the army's ranks. Your mages are turning up their noses at warriors, claiming that they are the army's main assault force. There is little doubt that their power is great, but what would it be worth if they weren't shielded by the infantry? There have already been a few fights, and sooner or later there will be blood. We have to prevent this, and I've got a plan. We should appoint a second general to show them who is more important. If you choose Chevel, the infantry officer, the warriors won't be so easily trifled with. He's a good fighter. He was among the first to join the army and he's proven himself in battle. He will be assigned uh, the officer mage Sifa. She's powerful but arrogant and lacks experience. Um, a point of warrior to the post. It's your deputy, you decide. A general must be able to stand in the front line and lead the troops, not to sit back in the rear where the mages stay. 
travel will make a worthy general. Okay. Your citizens are grateful to you, Mora. Thanks to you, their pockets are filled. Strange that it's not me they are thanking. Now that you are true queen, why don't we start producing coins with your face on them? For the record, this is the way for us to get our own currency at our disposal, which will have a positive impact on the market due to inflation. You're not listening to me, are you? I'll put it simply. Production, uh, producing coins does have a price, but it will pay off over time. Uh, yep. Jubilus nods approvingly. Everything is already in motion. Your decision was so obvious that it hadn't even occurred to me to delay the preparations. Okay. Don't tell me we are in the negative again. Boken looks different today. His pace is uh, slow and solemn, his back proudly straight. It seems that he's even put on a different rope, though it doesn't look any newer or cleaner than his normal one. Here is the potion, the things I had to go through to get this made. Sure, it doesn't bring back one's youth, but it does strengthen the body, sharpen the mind and a bolden spirit. It doesn't affect one's temper any longer. Aha! Inconceivable transformation of body, so... <laughs> Thank you! I do hope this helps. Troubled. Okay, we're still in the positive. This is the last Pitaxian uh, quest. Short intrigue, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the last one right now. Let's give this one our best shot, Lindsay! I'm going to save. Give this our best shot, Lindsay. Let's go. 25 days. Chord intrigue. 20% chance. Changelings, 20%, 0%. What are the project support? The treasurer's endeavors. Minting coin, 500 BP. 1 BP per day for each 1000 BP in the treasury. Heh. <laughs> what treasury? <laughs> Uh, the port, the general, swordplay mastery, with a bonus for resolving any situation. The amount of the bonus depends on the kingdom's relations. One to four, yeah, plus one bonus. Um, okay, five, we would get a plus one, get a plus three. Hello there, Runefarer, hello! How is the day doing? How it's going? Um, yeah, fine. Pretty fine so far. Um, I'm currently upgrading some some stats of my kingdom. Since we uh, cleared uh, all the threats in, in Pitax. Um, those three main ones. And I'm still waiting to get to the uh, Pitax uh, capital. I can't enter it yet. So we are still dealing um, with kingdom management stuff here. But overall it's doing fine. I hope you had a nice day so far. So um, yeah, let's see what what will we do. Maybe another uh, upgrade, uh, another rank up would be uh, nice to have. Some more crisis points to spend. Some more crisis points for us. The grand diplomats. Okay, okay. The treasures of the ancient. 
strengthen Cassil's skills. Going to do that. And one more rank up here. Start the project. Ted, hello there! First time tuning in. Welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to the stream. So, our treasurer is now ranked 9. Our Dory fighting school is done. The charmed prince, another problem. Guardians of the world wound. Okay, okay. Strengthen mega skills as treasurer. 20 days, 100 BP, let's go. And I'm going to see the Grand Dip uh, Diplomat now. Uh, but what do they have? What's going on? <clears throat> There's an issue that demands your attention. Seven Arch want to bring their fleet to Novoboro. Allegedly to combat pri piracy, but in fact they simply can't accept that the elves of Kionin are trading dwarven wares with the Five King Mountains. Control of a noble borough would allow seven archers to collect duties um, along this trade route. Both Kionin and seven archers are asking for diplomatic support. I think we should put seven archers on a short leash. The most recent step is just another attempt to take away someone else living. We could also bring our fleet to Novoboro to steal their initiative, but it's better we have Kionin as an ally. Uh, yeah, this is this is uh, this is my first playthrough, um, of the game, pretty much. Yeah. So you know best what to do. Wonderful. We will let Seven Archers know that we won't tolerate their brazen efforts to seize an honest trade route. You can do this, Lindsay. I trust in you. So. Uh, and what do we have here? Eileen, um, with another gift. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's something else. My partner finally managed to send the article I promised. Now I just need to arrange its delivery. If you want your trophy, please do not disturb my work. Allow me to do my job and you'll have it very soon. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Then uh, go on with it. Different advisors say different things. Sure, sure. Um, well, uh -huh. I think most of them, most of them are of good or or neutral alignment, you know. So most of them would like decide things or advise me with stuff that I would likely do or choose on my own as well. So I can trust them with most decisions. Yeah, mm. you had a different diplomat. Uh, who did you pick? Um, Dragon bows from the waist. Um, another gift from him. The torpor. Okay, thank you very much. Now they are bringing all the gifts. Um, okay, let's let's uh, skip through this here. All the gift bearers. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The crown thanks you for this humble gift. Thank you very much. Bartholomew Delgado. Uh, that Bartholomew. Who was that one again? Uh, I kinda remember this name. I kinda... It's familiar. The name is familiar. I can't recall it right now. So. Oh, we have a level up. Oh, I didn't even take care of all the level ups right now, right? I was so... I was focusing, focusing so hard on what was currently going on with my kingdom management that I didn't, didn't take the time to level up. In the troll... Ah! That one, the, the hermit, right? There uh, in the northern Null marches, I think, he was located at. The Grand Deputy uh, Diplomat, yes. Easier upgrades. Reaching claims and upgrades cost 25% less. That's nice. That's a nice bonus. Support, Grand Diplomat's Endeavor. Um, is there anything 
manageable right now from the DC. Something with a low DC that we could easily take care of. Something below 30. Wait. Okay, Kurt Intrigue, it's still... Uh -huh. I have two crisis points, but I would like to save those crisis points for something very, very nasty. Not just regular events and problems that pop up. Competition. 20%, 23%. We could totally do this. Rank up some more training. They are still in the middle of the training. Okay. He was experimenting on the troll. Yeah, I remember now. I remember now. Yeah. I told him to, to, to get rid of the troll and he didn't like me after that very much. Yeah. I interfered in his experiments. I thought about maybe uh, for my next playthrough um, uh, doing an evil playthrough. So, especially for the next game, for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, I already have a certain character in mind I would like to play. That would be an evil playthrough. And maybe until then, uh, let's see what other games um, I would like to play, I would like to cover here. And, um, but if I uh, give Pathfinder Kingmaker another shot for a second playthrough, I would go for an evil, evil route there. Yeah. So, they are occupied with stuff. And I still, I can't enter Pitax. need Octavia's mother. I could try. I mean, I could just try to... I could walk up there and, and uh, knock on the door and maybe they let me in. I don't know. I don't believe so. The game would just give me some sort of sign if something has changed and I could now go there. Well, evil playthroughs are fun, though a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. On the one hand, you feel this kind of em empowerment yeah, to just do what you want to do without holding back. Without um, yeah, taking uh, other, uh, other person's feelings into consideration. And on the other hand, yeah, you feel, you feel nasty for, for doing it. Yeah. Um, I'm there. We are going to level up now. We are going to level up some characters. At least my main party right now. Um, so we're going to save here, level 16. Mm. Level 16, let's go. Starting with our main character. Sorcerer, 16. Whew. New ability point. Last and more with charisma. So persuasion. I need more persuasion. I need uh, knowledge arcana. Maybe some athletics. I'm not sure. Go with mobility. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, oh, a level 8 spell. What would you like? Dragon Kind 3. I'm not using these transmutations, this Dragon Kind transmutations, though, very much. Polar Ray. Does it do? Maximum. 25d6. The ray deals 1d6 points of cold damage per caster level. And uh, 1d4 points of dexterity drain. Oh. Oh. 
That's nasty. Medium range. Power words done. What does this one do? You utter a single word of power that instantly causes one creature of your choice to become stunned, whether the creature can hear the word or not. The duration of the spell depends on the target's current uh, hit point total. Any creature that currently has 151 or more hit points is unaffected by power word stun for 50 or less HP, the duration, da da da. Uh, mm, mm, I don't know. Diction of failure. Protection from spells. Diamond dust 10. 10 minutes per level. The subject gains a plus 8 resistance bonus on saving throws against spells and spell like abilities. But not against supernatural and extraordinary spells. Single target. Rift of Ruin. Sea mantle. That's what the one dragon was casting. You sheath yourself within a churning column of pure elemental water up to 30 feet high that fills your space. You can see, hear, and breathe normal within the sea mental, but attacks against you are treated as if you were under the surface of the water. You gain improved cover, plus 8 cover bonus to AC, plus 4 bonus on reflex saves against foes that do not have freedom of movement effects. You also gain immunity to fire. The cover granted by the sea metal does not enable you to make stealth checks or prevent attacks of opportunity. Magical attacks against you are unaffected unless they require attack rolls. Alright, Runefair, thanks for stepping by. Have a nice and pleasant day. And if we don't see each other again for this year, then have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So, shout Stormbolts? Stormbolts, uh, yeah, Harim has this spell as well. Greater Shout? Mm. So this is centered around the caster. She's not going to. She's not going to be um, up front in the first row of combat very often. What about Sunburst? What is this? What does Sunburst do? All right then, Runefair. Then take care. Have a nice day. A uh, sunburst causes a globe of searing radiance to explode silently from a point you select. All creatures in the globe are blinded and take 66 points of damage. A successful reflex save negates the blindness and reduces damage by half. An undead creature caught within the globe takes 1d6 points of damage per caster level. Okay, so against undead creatures this one is very nice. Um, against other creatures, it's more like meh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hmm. I don't know about sunburst and the storm bolts. It can be nice on Harim because Harim is up front, uh, melee fighting enemies, but for uh, but for our sorcerer. I don't know. This one, out cone attack, shadow evocation greater. This spell functions like shadow evocation, except that it enables you to create a, pot a partially real, illusory version of a chain lightning, cold ice strike, key shout, Sirocco caustic eruption, or elemental assessor spell. If a recognized as a greater shadow evocation, a damage Damaging spell deals only three fifths damage. Sixty percent. I wonder how how this spell actually works. Do you select the kind of illusionary spell you would like to cast? Or is it random? Power of word. 
polar ray could be nice. The dexterity drain on certain enemies. That could be nice. Death clutch. Chanting an unholy litany, you reach out with a grasping motion toward your target and cause its heart to leap out of its chest and into your head. A target with 200 or fewer hit points remaining that fails uh, its saving throw is instantly killed. A target with 201 or more hit points that fails its saving throw manages to keep its heart from leaping out of its chest but it's still staggered for one minute and takes 1d4 points of constitution drain and 1d4 points of constitution plead. Still staggered for one round as it feels the heart wrenching. Succeed. And a fortitude save. So most creatures have quite within close range. Close range is uh, wild as well. We maybe we go with the polar ray first. If we can pick up another spell later on, we can try this heart thingy. So um Yep. Going with this one. So for our ranger level sixteen. Improved evasion. This ability works like evasion, except that while the character still takes no damage on a successful reflex saving throw against attacks, he henceforth takes only half damage on a failed save. A helpless character does not gain the benefit of improved evasion. Hmm? I believe um, rogues get this one as well. Um, so, dexterity. Get their plus nine modifier. Oh, I will, t I will have to take a look at his uh, equipment. Not that he is wearing any, any armor that weighs his uh, dexterity modifier down. Uh, athletics. Uh, 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 perception. Lore, nature. Knowledge, world. Maybe more knowledge work. Proved evasion, that's it. Okay. Knock knock. Our crazy damage dealer rogue, rogue talent. Picking another rogue talent. And dexterity plus he. Perception, stealth and trickery. Maybe more athletics. Blinding strike. The character who selects this talent gains blinding critical as a bonus feat. Even if she doesn't... Blinding critical. Okay. Confounding blades. When a character with this talent hits a creature with a melee weapon that deals sneak attack damage, the target cannot make attacks of opportunity. Improved evasion. Don't we already have improved evasion? Um. Yeah, let's try planning strike. Planning strike and blinding critical. Whenever you score a critical hit, your opponent is permanently blinded. A successful fortitude save reduces this to dazzled for 1d4 rounds. The DC of this fortitude save is equal to 10 plus your base attack bonus. This feat has no effect on creatures that do not rely on eyes for sight or creatures with more than two eyes. Blindness can be cured by heal, regenerate, remove blindness or similar abilities. Especially you can only apply the effect of one critical feat to a given critical hit unless you possess crit uh, critical mastery. Yeah. 